VGK falls to St. Louis in overtime on a defensive breakdown. The final score in overtime was 2-1. to one. We recap the game, what went wrong for the Golden Knights on the Blues' final possession in OT. It's all coming your way next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. And make sure that you tune in wherever you get your podcast and go to the YouTube channel, which is Locked On Golden Knights, and subscribe there. We are brought to you today by FanDuel. Make sure that you download the FanDuel app, fanduel.com slash locked on, kick off the NFL season and you could get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. So, Chris, thanks for putting up with my audio <laughs> difficulties, as usual. We're my good. apologies. We're good. We're good. We're good. The Blues, uh, Pavel Buchnevich scoring the game winner just uh, 38 seconds into overtime last night at T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. Uh, was the game winner... Jack Eichel's fault. Um, I felt as though Jonathan Marshall so also uh, could not get over to cover up Buchnevich. But what went wrong on that final play, the goal, the game winner for St. Louis? So what happened was Eichel started taking a run to the opposite side. Eichel, in my opinion, cheated a little bit. And I wish I would have asked him about this. We had him at the end of the game, and I just didn't even think about it, unfortunately. I just asked about the coverage. But looked like the Blues were turning the puck over. So Eichel does what you do when you are – there we go. I'm set up. Eichel does what you do. You start jetting to the other side. Unfortunately, the other two players on the ice, I believe it was Marcheseau and Petrangelo, failed to realize that Eichel was streaking to the other side. And no one covered down low. So it's Eichel's man. I think that's the way we'll start this. Uh, would have been nice if one of three things would have happened, of course. March is so reading the coverage, Petrangelo reading the coverage, and Logan Thompson making a save on probably not the game's best shot, unfortunately. I saw, you know, um, in the aftermath, I had heard Cassidy uh, speaking a little bit, um, and he just talked. I, Eichel did, obviously, some good stuff, and then, the laps there on that final play, uh, but he called his goal um, at 7.07, a timely goal on the power play, and he wasn't uh, particularly disappointed with the team's effort, was he? No. I mean, my question to Coach Cassidy was, well, first of all, I, I, had, I had one in my pocket because I had a feeling I wasn't going to get this because the first person to ask was going to, hey, you're going to chalk this up to a hot goalie or, you know, is there something else? So, and that's pretty much how Cassidy started talking about the hot goalie. And, you know, these things just do happen sometimes. Uh, my question to coach was, do you change the game plan after a game like this? They get to see him right away on Wednesday, which I think makes the Golden Knights excited. It, it also makes Jordan Bennington excited. He's going to want to repeat exactly what he did and why shouldn't he? He had a, a magnificent game. So maybe we should have started by giving him credit for how well of a game Bennington played more on that obviously a little bit later um but as far as the game plan like coach is happy right coach figures that they would win that game much many more times than they would lose I mean the high danger chances according to natural stat trick were 20 to 6 in favor of the Golden Knights so many high danger chances so many amazing saves I mean you start with the save on Cotter you then can go to any one of the 12 saves on uh, on friggin' um, Barbashev. Barbashev was possessed. Barbashev was working hard for a goal, and Barbashev had probably, in my opinion, his best game of the year, even though he failed to obviously uh, put one in. So, I mean, if you play this game 100 times, the Golden Knights probably win 78 of them. I mean, it's just one of those games. But, again, looking ahead to our third segment, is this a hot goalie situation? Is that an excuse or a circumstance? 
circumstances, baby. Uh, Jordan Bennington, by the way, stopped uh, stopping 33 of 34 shots. I think I saw your retweet there. Uh, stopped 16 of 16 high danger shots. Yeah, it wound up being 20. It, it, it went up to 20. So, twenty of twenty. Yeah, I must. Have, I must have had an old tweet when I when I retweeted that out. But it, it went up to 20. twenty of twenty. I mean, that's just playing way over your head. My favorite save though was on the Eichel shot and the poke check. Where oh, that poked. was great. Yeah, that, that was, was just great goaltending. You have to chalk it up to just that on a night where uh, VGK was on the attack again. Great puck management. They went into the attacking zone. And they did a terrific job. And uh, for Eichel now, four-game point streak. Has he scored goals in four straight games? Is that the stat? He's really done uh, a terrific job now of just getting his team just like where they're leaning on him uh, to come up with the big plays. And this, I think, again, Eichel just responds best with his back against the wall. And he's a team leader. He really is. Um, I think we talked about this yesterday. So Eichel's a point per game player. You can chalk that up during the prime of his career. He's going to be right between a point in every in ninety five percent of the games that he plays. Possibly going to exceed that this season if uh, the stars align, which so far they have in the first twenty six games, I believe now. But the difference is the difference maker. I think that's what you just said a second ago. It's the fact that Eichel is now showing he's he's showing what he did in Buffalo, I guess, right? Eichel had to carry the team, he had to carry the mail. Eichel even had to, you know, serve beer in, in the stands and, and peanuts and stuff. He had to do absolutely everything for the Buffalo Sabres organization. Tony Cordasco, there you go. And now in Vegas. You're seeing him, his confidence is growing, which is scary because he's still playing that two-way game. He is still playing good defense. He is still out there on the what's going to become the power kill version 2.0 with William Carlson. I mean, credit Keegan Colasar for taking a penalty early in the first period. The goal nets were falling a little flat, so he said, hey, I'm going to go in the box, and uh, we're going to get a couple more high-danger chances during this penalty kill. You watch, and... That's exactly what happened. Um, but Eichel is now becoming the spotlight, the main attraction, the go-to, the the line one center that Kelly McCrimmon knew he was going to be. But now you're getting the flashes of the razzle-dazzle stuff that he did with Buffalo while still being a team player and trusting his teammates because Eichel knows he doesn't need to be the man every night. But right now he kind of does need to be the man, and that's okay. Yeah, and uh, great screen set in front of the net there on his goal. Oh, Mark Stone. Uh, Mark Stone, yes, terrific. Uh, there, just it, the goaltender Bennington for once was pretty much blocked out. Uh, Torovchenko had the goal early, uh, deflected goal there uh, with just twenty point seven seconds. That hurts. That yeah, hurts. left that in hurts. The, left in the uh, first period. Yeah, that's that's something that just it's hard to come back from VGK. For the most part, they're the team that gets those late goals, right? And then they carry momentum into the next period. Uh, I thought that it was something interesting, too, that Cassidy said last night about the low to high game. Was this part of your answer? I think the low to high game uh, was missing Theo, Shea Theodore, yes, last night. Yes, that was part of it, yep. Yeah, he said he creates uh, lanes and chaos. He called it chaos, and he's hard to defend. <laughs> Do you want to expand a little bit on that answer? Yeah, I mean, just kind of talking about Shea Theodore's, Theodore's game. I mean, Theo. there's, Theo, there's yeah. a lot of things that Theo yeah. does well for the Golden Knights. His defending has improved a lot. Let's start there. His defending was a concern, and he's had some not-so-great rounds in the playoffs where he'd be caught pinching at the blue line, giving up odd man rushes and stuff, but that part of his game has expanded. Um, what Theodore brings to the Golden Knights right now that's missing, uh, that first bre that first breakout pass, kind of like Alec Martinez, which the Golden Knights are also missing. Uh, Theodore rushes the puck up ice and can create an odd man opportunity simply by beating a forward or a center in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And then all of a sudden you're looking at three-on-two, four-on-three, you know, two-on-one, depending on what's happening right there. But I think where Coach Cassidy is alluding to missing Theo, there you go, 
Theodore the most is on those low to high circumstances where Jack Eichel takes the puck behind the net, chips it off the boards up to the blue line, and Theodore doesn't shoot right away. He looks for a pass. He uses his he feet. Steps. He always sidesteps. He sidesteps, and then someone yeah. with an injured ankle falls down, and yet everyone oh, thinks man. he broke his ankle. There you go, Tony. There leave you go. Leave Declare out of this conversation. Yeah, leave Decla- Anthony Declare talking about the Stanley Cup uh, final last year, game two, I believe. But anyway, um, Theodore, he finds that lane, and he has this wrist shot. It's not a fast wrist shot. It's the right wrist shot. It's the right shot where it's either going to be Low to the ice, but uh, something else Coach Cassidy talked about, Tony, where the puck, you're not shooting for skates, you're shooting for sticks. There you go. Theodore is really good at looking for that deflection or sniping a shot from, you know, 38 feet uh, away from the goalie. And really fast, one more thing on Eichel while we were talking about it. So I think there was under a minute left in the game. There is a face-off in the neutral zone. I don't know if this one made TV or not, um, the, my question, but... Eichel chips the putt to himself. He wins the faceoff forward. The Blues' de- defense is, you know, parting of the Red Seas. They're not lined up properly. Eichel reads this, wins the faceoff forward, and he. I don't know if it registers as a high danger chance, but it was a great chance. He created a opportunistic scoring chance two seconds after winning a faceoff in the neutral zone. Who does that in the NHL? That's some you don't see a whole lot. I asked Eichel about that after the game, and he downplayed it, which I know he would, but I still wanted to hear what he thought about it. And he felt it was more of an instinct thing. He saw the way the players were lined up, and he just letting his instincts uh, kind of guide him. And, I mean, it almost imagine if that goes in right there and what we're talking about right now. This is just, you know, Eichel's on another planet right now. Coming up next, a lack of support once again for VGK goaltender Logan Thompson. We'll discuss that when we return right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. You know, fans, uh, we spend a lot of time together, you and all of us here. Uh, We get fired up together with all the wins and the losses, who starts, who sits. We are thankful for that connection that we have. And today, we want to continue our chat with something just a little bit more personal as we learn that you can get a one-year supply of ED medications. You realize what that means? You could bring on the extended travel, you could bring on the next natural disaster or supply chain issue. You are covered, our friends. You don't have to worry about whether or not that you can refill the generics for Cialis, for Viagra, and for your prescriptions. And this is made possible because of our friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12 month supply on your daily medication. And remember to use the promo code LOCKDOWN at checkout for a discount as well. And there's a lot of verification from customers uh, talking about the, being thankful for this service. And again, the supply chain issues have caused folks to cut down their pills in half in order to have it. So if you or someone you love wants to get some peace of mind by having a year's supply of any daily med, then go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use the promo code locked on for $20 off of your purchase. Welcome back to Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Sorry about the funky phone view today and all that, folks. Uh, just want your oh, shirt. Coming through. What, what's the link for your shirt, Tony? Can we get the link so we can buy that? It's a one of a kind, bro. It's just, yeah, limited edition. Uh, I could put this up as an NFT somewhere, maybe. Game Thanks used. Game, <laughs> game used. Game, game sure. used memorabilia. Don't forget, Don Fridays, it's WTF. What the Friday on Saturday, the Chris and Chris show, the YouTube exclusive. So go there and subscribe today. Hey, before we go into the second segment, I got to do a quick shout out really fast, Tony. Sorry to cut you off, but I wanted Did to get somebody it before. ripped me last night. At no, the, no one ripped you. No, 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 no. I'm actually uh, very positive. So, um, one of the players on our team, her name is Ryan. Uh, she's actually a big fan of watching like the pregame and stuff, and she really enjoys watching Ashley Vice. So she told me that I, we we I had to practice right before the Golden Knights game, so I was on the ice and then had to go home, shower, and make my way down to the strip. And um, I caught Ashley in the post game, 
And I asked Ashley if she could just spend, you know, 30 seconds making a quick video saying hello to Ryan and stuff. And she did. After all the interviews and stuff, Ashley was kind enough to take that moment. I've already gotten feedback. I already sent the video off. And uh, Ryan from the hockey team was extremely uh, grateful. And it was just a nice yeah. memory. So just awesome shout out to Ashley for being amazing. And that was uh, incredibly appreciated by the family and myself. Very cool. That's that's awesome. Uh, Logan Thompson, we want to talk about LT, now 6-3-2. And, and we've talked about him being Jacob deGrom with the lack of uh, goal ah, support. Uh, there you go. I didn't know it took me a second. Support. Was yeah, he, was he the aviator second. too, right? Was DeGrom an, an aviator before he went to the Mets or no? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It was a 51, I think. 51, good call. Good call. Yeah, good yeah. call. 51. Uh, but uh, again, on Monday night, no different. Um, LT has now lost six of its uh, of his last eight, and in three of those games, well, they were shut out twice, and then last night they just scored one goal. So a lack of goal support for LT, um, and he did have the two four to one wins, the Caps and Vancouver. Uh, but what what does he need to do to get like more out of his team's offense uh, in his starts? And I'm just and I'm now I'm a little bit worried if they're not going to score goals around him. Uh, and the next couple of games, so they go to St. Louis, right, VGK, and then they go to Dallas. Uh, and Patera's got to be somewhere in between there, right? Uh, Patera, I would assume, goes Sunday if Sunday. Uh, for some so reason. Two more starts, you think, with no oh, yeah. goals? Oh, support? yeah. There's, I mean, listen, you got a day off. Uh, that's no issue there. And then you got two days off before Dallas, Thursday and Friday. Um, Saturday, Sunday is the back-to-back. -back. So option A would be hopefully Hill's ready to go. Let's start the bidding there uh, by Sunday against the Sharks. That would be a good game to kind of get him warmed up. No eh, disrespect intended. It's the Sharks, I guess. Or option B, Patera goes in. I mean, he should be okay against the sharks but you just never know what so do they play the sharks six times this year in the strict schedule I, th I mean it should be at least four or possibly three um the kings is only three the kings is only three which is so i mean here here here's the important thing you said what does uh thompson have to do thompson already has more assists this year than white cloud carrier martinez <laughs> he's tied colasar ron Bjerg, howden with two assists. So that's what Thompson's got to do. He's got to be better behind the puck with the net. Um, so you, you mentioned the goal support, and it, it makes sense to the eye test, but, I mean, here's the goal totals for the Golden Knights in Logan's last starts, going backwards last night with the Blues. One, and then four. Four, four, zero, three, zero, two. And then the star of the season was all threes, fours, and fives. We'll deal with that later. So, oh, boy. It was almost bad. Um, is the goal support not there? Is it as bad? I don't know if it's as bad as we're making it out to be. If you're going to chop the last few games, I guess. But, I mean, I don't know. It's just, just some bad luck, I think, for Logan. And what matters is the fact that his save percentage. What matters is his save percentage, right? Uh, he's coming in with a 9-1-9-2-3-3 goals against. So, there's not a whole lot to be concerned about Logan's game. Is it just weird that he's not getting the goal support at times? Mm -hmm. I think it's just more of um, more of an outlier. And obviously, once we can look at this from a totality perspective at the end of the year, it should all flatten out. I don't think there's any. It's going to be a weird stat that's going to hold throughout the season. Can't the goaltender? We've seen this before, right? Tell me if I'm wrong here, but you're probably wrong. So go ahead. I'm probably wrong. Can't the goaltender fuel the offense? In other words, don't hang on to the puck, get those outlet passes, start the puck up ice a little bit more, a little bit quicker, maybe in some of his starts? I mean, listen, he's doing that, right? He got that long assist. I uh, forgot what game it was, but he got that long assist. And forget the assist oh, in the last the game. That was yeah. William Carlson just flubbing a puck, but still Logan yeah, yeah, got yeah. the assist. No. Um, we saw it. I mean, Logan's going to play in the puck. He does get the puck out. He's aggressive on the puck. He's looking to play the puck. Um, sure, could that be better at times? I think all goalies, it could be better. But you also got to be careful with that. If you're too aggressive, bad things can happen, too. You could have you could have the El Gaffe. What do you call it? El Gaffe. Le Gaffe. Le Gaffe. There you go. Le Gaffe, El Gaffe, Giraffe, whatever. But 
you can have things like that happen when you do get a little excited when that puck comes down to you and yeah. stuff. Um, or you could do, I think it was Mike Smith that executed a, yeah, uh, just an amazing overtime pass once in the playoffs. I mean, so I hear what you're saying. I haven't watched the game, Logan's game enough to like, I don't feel I'm missing something where Logan could be playing the puck more, I guess is what I'm saying. And okay. Aiden, same thing. I mean, I think they're both fine at that and getting those quick outlet passes. If anything, they're challenging themselves now because Logan Thompson did it once and now they're all going to want to do it. Okay, so as a precautionary measure, I'm doing today's show on my phone. Yes. And as a oh, precautionary that's... measure, Aiden Hill won't be going on the road with VGK. Precautionary? Yes. I mean, uh, listen, this is a strange circumstance. And I know we're kind of having a little fun with the precautionary word and stuff. But in the same breath, Maybe it's a good thing they did have this precaution against the Vancouver Canucks last week because obviously there was something more to the situation. Obviously, when you got the pads on and you have the air mission of a game, there's only so much you can do so quickly to see what the problem or potential problem is. Obviously, there is a problem. And it's a bigger problem. And had he finished that game, had they not had this precautionary measure, we could be talking about a much different situation. Um, you had the kiss of death from Coach Cassidy on Saturday. We're calling him day to day, the dreaded four now. You never want to hear Cassidy say that because it always indicates, not always, it usually indicates a bigger issue. This is the right time in the schedule for Aiden to take some time off if this is really a precautionary thing that they don't want to become bigger because you do have the right space between the games and looking ahead here i mean you got the blues that the golden knights have a back-to-back -back. day off flames come two days off sabers come day off ottawa comes so i mean realistically if they can get logan right by monday the 11th that would be perfect or even the 19th you mean Aiden? because you meant Aiden. Aiden. I'm sorry. Yes, even they get yeah. Aiden right, Aiden Thompson and uh, Logan Hill right there. We go. Oh, I'm doing that again. Um, if they can get if they can get Aiden Hill, if they can get Aiden Hill right. Let's even push it back for Sunday the 17th. The Golden Knights got a four game week, three on the road. Uh, that's obviously Tony's favorite road trip of the year when uh, the team goes down to Florida. Yeah, a lot of tanning booth time and a lot of time on the beach for our guy South Beach Bruce. Uh, my shout out goes to DJ Joe Green, who was taunting me last night by telling me he was going to be playing Dancing Queen. So thanks. Big ups, Joe. Appreciate that. They got um they got a song for, for Eichel now. What what were they playing? I don't know. Back Jack, do it again. I don't and, know. Yeah, actually, that's what that's that's no what they way. did play. You're you're hundred percent right. No, dude, you are a hundred percent right. That's just a wild guess. That's a gimme, that's a layup. Okay, on, well, go. I'm I'm not as old as you, so I'm not as cool as oh, the, all that music goes. Oh I'm not probably not as far though, honestly. Yeah. You, you almost fired one right there. You almost yeah, yeah, yeah. You almost had you almost had a, a giraffe or a legaf or a elgaf. Or... Legaf, a legaf. Uh, coming up <laughs> next, BGK faced a very hot goalie last night in Jordan Bennington. How does VGK break through versus these hot goaltenders? We get to that more shenanigans. Right after this, on Locked On Golden Knights. Score right now and during the NFL season with FanDuel. It is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so, so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options. We've got everything from point spreads to player props. We've got over-unders, totals, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com today and make sure that you use FanDuel.com slash locked on. You can kick off this NFL season. And FanDuel is the official betting partner of the National Football League. Welcome back on this edition of Lockdown with the Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Collin from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. We appreciate you doing so. Don't forget WTF Fridays. 
what the Friday, I almost swore again. And uh, there's yeah, something going on today. I've had a great morning. Uh, you know, when you wake up in the morning, measures, precautionary I know measures. I took a precautionary measure by using the phone because the audio wasn't working correctly. So we'll get that figured out for tomorrow's show. And we just have a lot of fun. And on Saturday mornings, it's the Chris Times Chris show with the Gallic family. And uh, that is a YouTube exclusive. And make sure, please, that you subscribe there. Okay, we got that all in, Chris. Um, so VGK runs into yet another hot goaltender in Jordan Bennington last night who stood on his head. You said, what was it, 20 out of 20 of high danger shots turned away. Just a phenomenal game. And the lone goal again for VGK was the Jack Eichel goal with Mark Stone just setting a huge screen. Uh, how do you beat goaltenders like this? Is that the only way is to make sure that you're more physical at the front of the net, put more bodies in front of the net? How do you how do you break through? I feel like this was a one of the few times Pete DeBoer might have had a better outcome in a game like this than Coach Cassidy. The reason I say they that is three goals. They didn't go with his three goal for scratch. Well, DeBoer, right? DeBoer is the king of spray and pray, right? You know, fire mm -hmm. those, fire everything that moves. Hopefully, sometime along the way, you do get that bounce. I thought one of the game's best chances, and I don't even know if reg it registered as a high danger, but um, Chandler Stevenson, it was in the second, no, it was in the first period. It was in the first period. Stevenson just takes the puck. Uh, he winds up carrying it all the way behind the net, gets it all the way back to the blue line, fires a, a lazy wrist shot. I say lazy just because it wasn't a, a fast shot, but Howden was right there. Howden took two accident. Amadio was right there. And those were the types of goals that you just need in a game like this. I'm not saying they did anything wrong by not scoring it, but those are the chances that just seem to find their way in and obviously that's kind of the way they scored on the power play right eichel comes in and my description of the eichel goal was you know picture like those goofy intermission contests where someone has to shoot the puck through the hole to win the car and if the puck is this big the hole is this big like that's literally what the difference is it's so rigged but that was about the opening that eichel had on his goal right there so again credit bennington for being tall but <sighs> couple things here so high danger chances maybe this is a stat that i'm going to start keying in on a little bit more the golden knights recently ran into hot goalies in cal gary arizona and pittsburgh what were the high danger chances in those games that's what matters to me against the flames the golden knights out chanced out chanced them nine to six against the coyotes out high danger chanced them nine to four Pittsburgh was the only game where the Golden Knights lost the battle of high danger chances, 10 to 12, obviously in favor of the Penguins. So that's the first thing. The second thing I want to look at is Coach Cassidy's playoff record, not record, but the goal totals after they either lost a game or, you know, ran into a goalie in, in the that was decent in the playoffs. So Everyone was concerned April 18th, right? The Winnipeg Jets beat the Golden Knights 5-1 to and take a 1-0 lead in the playoffs. Only time Coach Cassidy's ever trailed with the Golden Knights. They come back and put up five goals against Hellebuck. In the last four games, 5-5-4-4. Five, five, four, four. Edmonton, they lose game two. They only get one goal behind AHL, uh, AHL sensation Jack Campbell. The next game, they get five goals. But then they only score one goal and lose. Next two games, they score four and five. Uh, looking at the situation with the Dallas Stars, they lost two games. They lost two in a row, but then they get a six spot. And then the Panthers series, I mean, in Florida, the Panthers show up. The Golden Knights only score two and three goals. They win one of those games. But then, obviously, they come back and put up a friggin' nine spot to win the Stanley Cup. So Cassidy can adjust. And as my ramble goes on and on and on here, where I'm going to close this out at, is the fact that a hot goalie in the regular season, yes, it's tough, it's concerning. What adjustments can be made if it's a seven-game playoff series? And does Ca Coach Cassidy have the pedigree to being able to make the right adjustments? Well, I just told you when it matters the most, according to the playoffs, he can. So 
let's see what happens on Wednesday. I'm, I'm so you're saying curious. take the over on Wednesday because they're going to break. I out. would I would take the over on the Golden Knights goals scored, especially if the books got got two enough uh, moxie to hang a two and a half two and, and a give half. you like minus one sixty for the Golden Knights to go over on that. So VGK not being able to defeat hot goalies is it becoming an excuse or circumstance? Or what's happening there? Right now, it is a circumstance. If this happens three or four more times in the next 10 or 12 games, then it's going to become an excuse, and they got to find a way. And this goes back to getting the other team's best effort. You know Bennington wants to come in and do well against the Stanley Cup champs. He's a Stanley Cup champ himself, in case people have forgotten that, along with, at the time, captain Alex Petrangelo. And, um, you know, Barbashev wanted to get one behind him. Petrangelo had some chances. So, I mean, Cotter. he rose to the occasion. Yeah, Cotter, Cotter as well. I mean, but yeah, so he rose to the occasion. Um, the Charlie Lindgren, never even heard of him, rose to the occasion. Um, Nijelkovic, the third goalie on the Penguins' pecking order, rose Ingram. to the occasion. Ingram, Ingram with, with rose to the occasion. Arizona. Yeah, who, who, who's, and wow. Arizona just just beat Stanley Cup champions. By the way, Five if Arizona if Arizona only played the recent Stanley Cup champions, they would That's go eighty two and zero. And if Ivan Barbashev only played the St. Louis Blues, he would be the MVP of the league. Mike, <laughs> you Mike drop for sure. You know what I like? I like after the game last night when I was listening to some of those comments and you got the questions and whatever. Uh, the lack of respect for Bennington. Even though he played a very hot game, they just called him the goalie, or their goaltender was really hot tonight. They didn't mention him by name, so I thought. That I mean, was Bennington's funny. psycho, but he's a good goalie when his head is on. And here's where you got to credit Bennington yesterday. Barbashev ran him. I don't think he necessarily meant to knock him down the way he did, but there was some traffic in front of the net. The ref, both refs saw it. Neither ref put their hand up, so they felt he was pushed in. But I think version 1.0 of Jordan Bennington throws off his helmet takes the stick like a hacksaw, and he's looking to Ron Hextall, the first person he sees. But Bennington kept his cool, even despite that awesome 9- or 10-year-old uh, taunting him all night with chance. Oh, that was priceless. That, that was, was so, so, so good, and he just was trying to avoid that kid. And I want that kid to be the co-host of my new Sunday show. Yeah, we're going to be eight days a week pretty soon, guys. We're going to yeah. be eight days a week pretty soon. <laughs> we're not doing a Sunday show, folks. But we do appreciate everyone tuning in. Thank you so much, especially our everydayers putting up with all of my technical issues. I am the absolute worst when it comes to anything tech. That's it. I mean, that is a story, as we know, as we definitely know. You found out, Chris. And then uh, our everydayers, we appreciate you. We appreciate everyone tuning in. We appreciate all the folks that listen for thousands of minutes to this show, wherever they get their podcasts. And of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel that is locked on Golden Knights. For my man, Tony, for my man, Tony Cardasco, I am my own man. For my man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco. There you go. I switched, I switched the screen. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked on Golden Knights. It's Dasco life, bro. It's Dasco life. 